Well, for more insight from Belgrade, I can now cross live to Boris Malagurski. He's a Serbian-Canadian film director and producer. Thanks very much indeed for joining us on RT. Well, a day after the news of the arrest broke, the International Monetary Fund said that Serbia may ask for a huge loan, twice as much as the country's officially allowed to ask for. So has capturing Mladic opened the door to international money as well as membership of the EU? Well, first of all, we have to take into consideration that the Serbia is already heavily indebted uh, to the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank. So it's, it's hard to, uh, to say that uh, this would be a sort of benefit from, for Serbia. But um, uh, we have to also take in, into consideration that this wasn't really a prerequisite for EU membership. It was only a prerequisite for becoming a candidate. For, uh, for EU accession, and uh, basically this does open the door to EU accession talks, but it is very questionable whether arresting and extraditing Radko Mladic will open the way for Serbia's EU membership. But wouldn't it not strengthen its chances? There are many saying that this arrest uh, could lead to a very strong possibility of it joining the EU, and in fact this man was sacrificed. What would you say to that? Well, there's a problem with that as well because uh, this is this was not and never was the only prerequisite for Serbia joining the European Union. There are many others, of course. First of all, uh, recognizing Kosovo as an independent country and having good neighborly relations uh, relations with Kosovo is uh, one of them. Then, of course, uh, becoming a member of NATO is another one, and the third one would be uh, recognizing a unitary Bosnia and uh, and accepting either an ab ab abolition of uh, of Republika Srpska or. A your formal status. These are unwritten rules, but arresting Ratko Mladic is just a, a very small step towards the EU, but it definitely does not guarantee Serbia anything at all. Are we likely to see Serbia recognize Kosovo? I hope not. I hope that Serbia will never recognize Kosovo, but uh, if you take into consideration the many uh, steps that this government has taken towards recognizing Kosovo, and if you also take into consideration that uh, the Serbian government, led by Boris Tadic, has announced that EU membership for Serbia does not have an alternative, when you say that something doesn't have an alternative, that means that it should be attained at any cost. And I think eventually, um, when, when Serbia is asked to recognize Kosovo, that the Tadic government will not, uh, will not be afraid to do so. Well, you seem to be speaking on behalf of um, a, a Serbian voice there. You're not uh, keen to see Kosovo recognized. What about you as a Serb joining the EU? It seems very much it's, it's a government initiative from the Serbian point of view to join the EU. Do the people of Serbia want to join? I think that the people of Serbia largely don't even know what the European Union is. And uh, I think the government is much more keen on convincing them that this is good for them. And this is really interesting uh, because something that is good for the people of Serbia, it should be felt by the people of Serbia automatically. It, sh it shouldn't take such big efforts by the government to convince them that this is the right thing for Serbia. So I think the Serbian people uh, are definitely becoming less and less interested in EU membership. And this, this can be seen by, by most recent polls taken. Uh, so I definitely could agree that the Serbian government is much more keen on Serbia being a member of the EU than, than the Serbian people do. Just want to ask you, uh, you're a C Canadian, Serbian Canadian film director and producer. Just from a social point of view, um, just how significant symbolically has this arrest been? Many say this is a moment now of reconciliation. This is a way that Serbia can come to terms with its past. W would you agree that this is a significant moment in Serbia's history? I think that arresting one man uh, can't be the pinnacle of, uh, of, of a sort of reconciliation and it can't be uh, uh, any, any big steps towards a reconciliation. That has to happen on the level of the people, not just the level of the governments. And there could be many uh, more, much more constructive ways to, to you know, uh, reconcile, reconcile these people uh, instead of arresting one man uh, that will be tried at a tribunal that has been very unfair when it came to uh, when, it, when it came to justice and, and treating all the peoples of the former Yugoslavia equally. Of course, I have to mention Nasser Oric, uh, a Bosnian um, uh, commander who was in charge of death squads around Srebrenica, who is walking freely today, who was released from the hate tribunal. Then, of course, Hashim Tachi, who is, uh, you know, the... Uh, who has never been indicted by the Hague Tribunal and who, who was described by Dick Marty as being as leading a, an organ trafficking trade in Kosovo. So it, it, it's very questionable whether extraditing Mladic will actually help towards bringing a, a more equitable and a more a, a justice-filled society in the Balkans. Boris Malagurski, thanks very much for joining us live there in Belgrade.